Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to explain how to create the white rose artwork that I did. Before we get going, I want to mention that the artwork relies on using a rotary tool, like a Dremel. I will be using the Customizer Engraver. I did a product review on this recently, and I will put a link to that video in the description below. The other thing that this artwork relies on is a line drawing. I'm using a line drawing of a rose, and that line drawing is available on my website free of charge. The techniques that I am going to explain can be used on any line drawing, so it doesn't have to be a flower. I just chose something that wasn't overly complex to demonstrate this with. Well, let's get started. Dark boards. The first thing we need is a dark board. This can be created any number of ways. For example, I'm using a pyography machine equipped with a large chisel brass pen tip to burn long, dark strokes over the board. This produces a dark board that has a slight sheen to it when angled in the light. Another example is using a torch. A torch can quickly turn the board a very dark color. Comparing the two boards, you can see that the torched board on the right has a flatter finish than the one on the left. Also, wiping a clean cloth over both boards reveals that the torched board has a lot of carbon sitting on the surface. The majority of this needs to be cleaned off before it can be used for the rose artwork. On the last board, I am going to use black acrylic paint that I have thinned with water. I diluted the paint by one-third. For every three drops of paint, I add one drop of water. The acrylic paint produced a very dark, uniform matte color. Pattern Prep My pattern is printed out on standard weight copier paper. I flip the printout over and apply a very light coating of spray-on adhesive. I am using Elmer's Craft Bond for this. I let it dry for four minutes, then I cut the patterns apart. Afterwards, I applied one pattern to each board. Engraving. Now, with the patterns in place, the boards are ready to be engraved. Use a rotary tool and carve over the pattern lines. Do a check to make sure you're getting through the paper. Also, engraving through paper creates a lot of dust, so make sure to wear a mask. You should be wearing a mask regardless. As I said at the beginning of the video, I am using the Customizer Engraver. I have the engraving bit equipped. The inset photo shows the bit that I am using. Once the pattern lines have been engraved, the pattern can be removed. Don't be surprised if some of the pattern pieces stay on the board. These will need to be removed individually. Fingernails and tweezers will probably remove most of them. For some of the difficult pieces, I found that using a rubber cement eraser worked well. And if that didn't work, I used the tip of a sharp knife to pry them up. Once the pattern is removed, then use the engraver to tidy up lines and fix any lines that are hard to see. Here's how my boards looked after I was done. Shaping. Now let's give the roses shape. Use a diamond drill bit of your choice. The inset photo shows the one that I am using. This type of bit acts like sandpaper when you use it with a light hand pressure. Lightly sand over one petal to remove a little color. Then re-sand along the outer edges of the petal to lighten it up. The goal is to remove most, if not all, of the color adjacent to the engraved line. Let the color remain darker the further from the engraved line that you get. The base of each petal should be the darkest area. To put it another way, 
we are creating gradient highlights. As you work, it can be beneficial to rotate the board so that it is easier to work along the edges of the petals. I'm currently working on the board that I used the pyography machine on for the background. As I lighten the burn marks, the color changes from a dark brown-black color to a lighter brown and tan hue. I mention this because it is one of the differences between a burned and a painted board. There are some other differences, but I will cover that when we work on the painted board. I'm on my learning curve with this board. It's the first one I've done, so I'm discovering how much pressure to use, how long the sand in one area, when to use the tip versus the side of the bit, what sort of hand movement to use, is it better to sand with or against the grain, which one of the 30 drill bits that come with the customizer is the best one to use, what speed on the customizer is best for this application. I don't have enough experience to give you definitive answers on all of these things. But what I can tell you, the tip of the bit is good for cleaning edges and working in smaller spaces. Make sure to use a light hand pressure because it can quickly create gouges in the wood. Also, a heavy hand pressure removes a lot more color, but it tends to pry up pieces of the plywood. This seems to happen regardless of the bit being used. This probably wouldn't happen on a solid wood board, but I'm not positive on that. I'm trying out a different bit as shown on the inset photo. This one is rounded at the end. I wanted to see if it would produce less pitting than the previous bit I was using. I'm sure a lot of the pitting and uneven surface is due to my lack of experience and not keeping a steady hand pressure. I mentioned before that quite a bit of dust is created when using a rotary tool, and the customizer is no different. You should always wear a mask when you're using any rotary tool. Since I have a mask on, I can't blow away the dust that forms on the board. Instead, I use a cheap paintbrush to brush away the dust. I've been deleting these from the video because they're distracting from creating the artwork, but I thought I should mention it so that you're aware of the situation. With the stem, I just removed a little of the color so it was a couple of shades lighter than the background. Here's how it looked after I was done. Now I'm working on the board with the painted background. I won't be showing the rows with the torched background, because that board was defective. I'm using the exact techniques as I did with the first rows. I'm using the same rounded diamond drill bit that I did before. I use it to gently remove a layer of color from one petal. When using a light hand pressure, the drill bit acts like sandpaper. After a layer of color has been removed from the petal, then I re-sand along the outer edges of the petal to make it lighter and brighter. I let the color get gradually darker the closer to the base of the petal I get. This just means that I am removing less color the further from the edge of the petal I am working. I have to say that this rose turned out much better than the first one. The highlights have better gradient shading, the sanded areas are smoother and more uniform in texture. I'm not sure if it's because of the rounded bit, or maybe because I have a little more experience and have a better idea of what I'm doing, or maybe it's because of the paint. It could very well be a combination of all three. I just really don't know. There are some differences I've noticed with the painted board. So let's talk about them. First, it takes longer to get to bare wood. Second, I think this is because the paint penetrated deeper into the wood surface. 
I'm guessing that watercolors and wood stains might go even deeper, but I don't know that for sure. I haven't tested it. 3. The bit gets coated with paint, and I have to clean it once in a while. To do this, I first remove any loose stuff. Then I rub the bit over an ink pen eraser. This is also called a sand eraser, and that removes any residual paint. 4. The acrylic paint seems to bond with the board and make it less prone for chipping out. Pieces of the plywood tended to fall out on both the pyography and torch burned boards. I do want to mention that I chose black paint because I wanted high contrast, but you can use any color that you like. Also, I chose acrylic paints because of their opacity, but you can use watercolors, wood stains, markers, alcohol inks, to name a few items. These colorants may not have the same effect on the board that watered down acrylic does, so I would recommend testing them out first. I am almost done with this rose, and I want to mention that my goal with it was to demonstrate the artistic possibilities of a rotary tool like the customizer. I hope you will be able to use the techniques in your own artwork. Here's how the second rose looked once I was done. Here is a comparison of the two roses. Well, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found the information informative. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the pattern that I used is available on my website, Pyography Made Easy, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. I will also put a link to the product review for the customizer in the video description. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you soon.